Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave, waking up for a nice early Thursday morning. It's Thursday, Thursday, or is that the saying? We got over hump Wednesday, that's more important. So as always, want to be wishing you the best, the best, the happy, the happy. Just want to be wishing you well over here from a very cold Helsinki, Finland. So let's get into the live stream right now and see. Yes, that's right. All my programs are on sale for the rest of the year. I need to always remind myself to actually talk about this. Or sorry, not for the rest of the year, the rest of the month with the code year 20, Y-E-A-R 20. That's all capitals for the year. And then the number is two zero. That goes for all my programs with all my payment plans plans all the way out to 10 months if you really want to spread it out for that for that long. I want to make that available for the people who want to treat this as perhaps like a college course. With regards to this program though, I always want to remind people, and I know it's kind of annoying, but understand that these programs are designed for the true diehards who want to look to learn how to do this, typically in the form of a living. So this is a 35 hour plus long program, very in depth, very very in detail. For most people who aren't looking to do something like that, this is gonna be complete overkill. You don't need to do it. So I, wanna, I always wanna remind people that unless if you really truly can, uh, can have the conviction that you wanna do this, don't consider this program. Consider my free materials. It's all there on my YouTube. It's quite literally all free and it's probably gonna get most people most of the way on which they wanna be. But for the people who wanna take it one step further, definitely this, th this is who it was designed for. So. That goes for all the programs, of course. I should briefly explain this. Uh, the technical analysis program right here, which is what I was just showing, that is the all-encompassing technical analysis program. That doesn't just include technical analysis, but strategies, risk risk management, position management, understanding market uh, understanding underlying mark dynamics, and then of course access into the members only Discord channel and access to actually to proprietary indicators. Master your options is the uh, is essentially the options program, you know, similar to the technical analysis program, but just for options. And then the jewel indicators are just access to the jewel indicators, nothing else to be quite clear. So with that said, I'm going to get back on over here into the actual charts and leave you off with that. Let me get rid of this. Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, nice. Let's get to the fun stuff now. Jesus Christ, Crown. Stop rambling about. Okay, overall, Bitcoin's done absolutely nothing in the last uh, in the last couple of weeks. But there are start there, there are starting to be some things that are forming right now. Uh, but of course, I want to remind myself and remind uh, and, and remind you that overall, as far as I'm concerned, as long as Bitcoin is above this yellow 21 expansion moving average right here at 38, uh, actually 38 20 now as it's crawling up higher, um, and below this cyan 89 exponential right here at about 39 30, actually a little bit lower than that. Um, I don't really have any major things to be doing. And while the lower time frames, you know, I've presented a few trades here and there, and you know, we've called some out, and we, you know, it's it's been you know it's cool to scale you know, $20, $40. It's great. But overall, now I want to really hunker down and focus on the next actual move because that is what I want to have my accounts balance ready for, ready and waiting for. A lot of people have been asking about this and I'm and I'm happy to show it, man. I haven't showed my, my streamer account in the last five days, but uh, my streamer account, I still have the same position, you know, that I opened up, uh, Jesus Christ, was it, four, was it five months ago now? In November when Bitcoin was 6,292. Um, I've gotten rid of half of it because it's going to be expiring soon. So I, w I really want to be rolling it over into the next expiration was going to be the Junes. So if Bitcoin does break 3,800 to the downside, I actually will put that same position on, um, well, I mean, you know, bigger size, uh, on the June contracts for my streamer account. Also my main account as well, actually. I'm happy to tell you that. Um, and... Uh, I mean, until that happens, I'm just going to be uh, holding these guys open. The only way that I'll close them is if we actually break out above 3930, because remember they are going to be expiring at the end of the month. So I do want to make sure that you know if, if we're going to if we're going to rally back above 3930, I don't believe that by end of month we're going you know we're we're going lower than that. That would be like the, my 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 next medium term time frame direction. And again, if Bitcoin does break out above this area, my first target would be somewhere right around 4200 ish area, and then probably beyond at around 4350, 4400. Kind of sounds about right to me. By the same token, if we do break the um, the 21 exponential to the downside at 3800. I would be looking for a move down to about uh, 3700 to 3650 in this range right here, and then likely on to the range low somewhere down around 3400. So that is what I want to be ready for because that is you know again where you can actually make the real money as you know on, on a real move the position that i showed you i mean i the one of the reasons why i took this position right here and why i held it for so long at 6292 is because how if if you, if, if people can understand if you can understand and you can and you can relate to this how many trades do you need to make a year if you find one like this I would argue that you really don't need to you, you don't need to find many. I mean, perhaps even just one. Uh, this trade on my streamer account, which is very low. I mean, it's 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 less than ten bitcoins in the equity. 
you know, could, 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 could cover you for like a year. So again, just that is the big, you know, the, 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 the big things that, uh, that I want to be aware of now, as we get more and more mature in this bear market, I don't want to make sure I, I don't want to get lost in the minutia and I want to be looking for, and I want to be keeping my account balances ready for that next real trade, which is, you know, do uh, do I think that we have another leg down? Yeah, probably. But really, my my next priority is to be actually getting into the you know fi finding out when Bitcoin bottoms. Of course, I mean that's a non Tesco statement. Yes, everyone wants to know that. And then obviously identify when Bitcoin goes into an uptrend. But for now, um, you know, yeah, we have called out a few trades in in the, in the lower time frames. Yeah, they uh, they did hit. But th those aren't what I'm really. That's not what I'm concerned about right now. I'm, I'm concerned about getting and, and keeping my account balances available for the next real trade, which I believe will be pre presenting itself relatively soon. And when I say relatively soon, probably in the next couple of weeks. Um, <clears throat> so very low time frames right here. If you know, if, if we want to force it out, uh, we could say that the ascending broadening wedge that we put in a couple of weeks ago broke to the downside, retested once, twice, three times, four times, rejected all four times, and then down, consolidating this area now between 38.20, which is a 21 exponential on the daily, and uh, 3870 a sherry to the upside if we do break above 3870 i would be looking for for a move back up into the blue box uh, supply territory over here if we do break 3820 to the downside i mean that's where pressure is back on once again i mean that you know that could have carry on over to the uh to uh, to the daily and if we do if we do actually break the 21 exponential to the downside you know i would be quite uh, as, as i said i would be quite bearish in fact i i am bearish overall in a bear market i'm going to be bearish it's just it's just the way that i operate it's the way that i trade um and i am leaning for this consolidation to break onto the downside but the time I mean, of this is, you know, it's, a, it, it's really irrelevant to me. It's more about the price triggers being hit and then taking position. Um, anyways, uh, looking at the two hour stokes right here, we do see that two hour uh, stokes are down, uh, actually just rejecting across the upside in the more neutral zone. Uh, two hour RSI, trending below the exponential, looking a little bit droopy, not necessarily strong, not necessarily weak, kind of right in the middle. Uh, four, hour, four hour stokes are actually up right now. Um, I'm curious what the eight hours are doing. Eight hours are down. 10 hours are going to likely be down. Yes, they are. 12 hours are down. And I'm curious what the daily is doing as well. The daily is still up, actually, just reaching for its first uh, its first entry into the bullish control zone for the first time in a, in a while. But that, to me, is probably a one-off, as when I go over here to the two-day total time frame, we are actually still coming down. And more importantly, when I go over here to the three-day we are down as well, and we just and we just initiated another tick on this so last night for both the two day and the three day at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time, and the fact that we are still getting confirmation down on this, while this this actually does look like it's losing momentum, but to me it's still confirmed down until it's not. The bigger thing to be aware of is that we have actually fulfilled another test of this trend line going all the way back from December of 2015. This was quite literally the high of Bitcoin at 20,000. Um, I, I think to the day, um, yeah, right around middle of December 2017, getting all of the major highs of the past year, or, or sorry, over a year actually. Again, your high of 20,000 right here, your high of uh, 10,000 right here before going out to 6,000, your high of, uh, of August at 8,400 right here before going out to 6,000. And then, of course, we have hit this trend line once again and turned down from it, which tells me that we actually are respecting it. Not only that, but we could form another trend line right here, which one, two, three, four, five tests. And these and, and this one actually getting the breakdown below 6,000 to 3,000, one of the big reasons why I did take that short, actually. Um, so to me, a lot of pressure being put on this area, and you see the Stokes actually responding to it. And I mean, each and every time that we've actually even crossed down on these stokes for the past over a year, um, the trend has been, you know, moved back down to the low side of the range on the three days. So, you know, looking at something like that, um, it, it just it's, it, it's one more one more tick in the bears category, I suppose. Anyways, uh, while we are here on the higher time frames, it is certainly of note that this price action is still very corrective in nature. The volume signature is also confirming that as consolidation. So to me, a corrective price action coming after a uh, after a big downtrend and then having that having having the signature of consolidation in the volume tells me that this is more than likely to be resolved to the downside over time. But how long does that take? I mean, that's you know. We can spend we can spend some more time in this area. I'd imagine um, I, I'd imagine it does get resolved within the next two weeks before end of month. But um, 
if it if it does move up to the upside, that's actually going to present a little bit of a uh, perhaps perhaps a different route. Anyways, while we're here, let me go back to the daily and actually you need to go back to BitMEX go for a second. So there's a lot of things coming around this 89 exponential right around 3930. It's not only just this cyan moving average, but also these horizontal trend lines coming in all the way back from November of, of the past year. Also the 236 uh, Fibonacci retracement coming in uh, right around this area as well. But if we go over to our Bitstamp chart and go over to the two week total time frame, you can very easily see that the red 10 simple moving average has actually been stifling price action for over a year now. And where is it coming in around? It's coming in right around 3900, which we haven't, we've quite literally been unable to both open and close a two week total above it. Not only that, but as long as we are respecting the lowest period moving average on this, which is the red 10 simple, and we are uh, living below it, to me, I'm looking at the yellow 21 and the green 50 over here, crossing the downside, initiating a, you know, which, what would tell me that the that the trend is actually increasing to the downside as these gain divergence away from each other. So, t so again, as long as we are respecting the 10 simple as resistance, I would be looking. I would be looking for to have some more follow through. Um, on top of that, the the monthly we have the green 50 exponential coming in right around this area as well, right around uh, 3900, which we broke for the first time in Bitcoin's history in December of of the last year. And ever since then, we have we have, we've been respecting it one, two, three and perhaps even four times now as resistance. So as long as Bitcoin is below there, I look at these two moving averages, the red 10 simple and the yellow 21 exponential getting ever so close to each other, very kissing each other. And if they were to actually confirm across, you know, a, a bear cross to the downside, I would be looking at that to once again, just add some more intensity to the sell and algo programs, which is going to more, more than likely send this consolidation to the downside, just kind of building up the case. Of course, all of these mental masturbation techniques go out the window when... It, if if Bitcoin were to break above thirty nine thirty, that's where you know you know all all this sort of things. So like all right, well, probably moving on to forty two hundred after that, and you know the the picture is going to change a little bit. Anyways, uh, we did just get another tick on the four hour. What did the four hour do? Yeah, four hours still still going up actually. What is the three hour doing? Yeah, three hours coming down, rejecting the more bullish control zone as well, and fucking around right on the two hundred simple actually. Anyways, if Bitcoin does, or sorry, what I should show now is actually this. Let's go to a fresh chart. Um, Bitcoin actually is kind of printing a head and shoulders right now on the higher time frames. This is a uh, 10 hour, the 10 hour and 12 hour, get this one pretty damn well. And the fact that we're getting so stifled along this yellow 20 minute exponential does tell me that uh, this is to be respected. And this is forming quite a nice well-defined neckline right here, which is confirmed by the volume metrics as well. That is what I'd be looking for on a head and shoulders. Now, of course, if I am going to be playing a pattern, which I typically don't like playing patterns, but uh, but it's not until we actually break below and close a higher level dildo below the neckline, the proverbial neckline right around, uh, what is it, 38.35, 38.40. It's so close, man. It's 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 very difficult to see right now. Um, but looking at this and, and looking at the and looking at the red 10 symbol crossing it down to so the yellow 21, that is telling me that this, you know, is get, it is respecting it. You can see a very, very obvious sell pressure right above there. Uh, not only that, but 10-hour stokes are still healthily down. 10-hour RSI is respecting the exponential and uh, making its way towards the bearish control zone. If this were to actually play out, there is a mesh move to be made. And uh, if we just put it on right here, it would suggest it, it would suggest an implied move somewhere down around uh, 3750, actually. So that, so 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 that would very obviously um, coincide with likely a break of that critical 3800 level that we spoke about on the daily. Now I need to see something close down below there for it to be official. But uh, now we actually do have some things aligning with that um, aligning with that idea. So very interesting. Um, what else do we want to talk about while we're here? Oh yeah, let's go over to CMEs. Um, CMEs, interesting as well as we are getting yet again another rejection along this trend line, which has been going all the way back towards late November of last year, getting one, two, three, four, five. I mean, you could even consider this six over here. Uh, highs, and by the way, all lower highs. And I do believe that the CME charts get the information or, or, or the data better than spot charts just because they don't trade on the weekends. So when you're not trading on the weekends, you're not gonna have to deal with all the weekend bullshit which typically gets faded during the week anyways that's why you see a lot of hunts go on during the weekend you'll see you'll, you'll see a move happen during the weekend and then it'll be quickly faded once a real trading week starts why does that happen well typically because the there's you know there's just less people playing the game on a weekend so it's a lot easier to perform a lot of these hunts a lot of these very nasty hunts to get people out of their positions and then once a real once a real week opens back up again you know price action typically comes comes, comes back down when we saw that run to 4200 it was very quickly faded the next day um um, 
on relatively light volume. Uh, so CME is right here, just printing lower highs all the way through and looking a lot like a bear pennant, actually, as long as we were respecting this area right here, which is coming around where 39 fucking hundred. So just another thing coming around that 3900 level. Um, and to me, it does look like uh, does look like a little bit of pressure down. We need to go down to the lower time frames to really get an idea of what's going on here, though. Uh, four hour. Um, Four hour looks, I mean, I, I didn't make this chart on the four hour, so I wouldn't really be respecting this trend line right here. But uh, but four hour jewel actually is, <sighs> this is not a sell signal, but it, it is saying pressure down right now. Uh, four hour stokes are actually up. Two hour stokes are down. Um, and you can see that price action on the two hour does look a little bit droopy. And two hour, two hour jewel actually will be, uh, two, hour, two hour jewel is giving a signal right here. This is not a perfect signal. If you have access to the jewel, I want to see it in, more of the, in the critical ranges. This one's right in the middle, but uh, it is a setup. Um, more importantly, for the daily, we actually do have daily. Oh, sorry. I was going to say that daily stokes are crossing down there and not. They're actually still up. I think I believe that's GBTC, which we'll get on to later. Uh, daily RSI did lose the exponential and, is, and, and I'd imagine probably does continue back down below it. Um, so yeah, again, I do think that this would, this would imply more, uh, a more downwards pressure on this guy, but same sort of levels, you know, it doesn't need to be any more complicated. I can give my opinions on all these sorts of things. Again, all the mental masturbation in the world doesn't matter if price action, you know, takes me out to the upside above 3,900. I, I would be long. I would be long to about 4,200. Um, that's, you know, that's, I, I don't see any reason to be short if Bitcoin uh, takes out 3,930 for a little bit of time. Um, at, yeah, at the very least, not be, uh, not, not be short in a maybe even a small long as I really, I just really don't like taking longs in a bear market. Um, so yeah, uh, let's go check out GBDC. What's GBDC doing? Where is GBDC? There he is. $4.50 closing on its lows and also closing below the daily 21 exponential right here. Also, you do see that the daily stokes are rejecting the more bullish control zone and crossing down, which I would imagine as long as we open here or lower, uh, when it opens back up at, um, what is it? I forget what time it is. Um, uh, what time is it? It's uh, it's 9, 9 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, I'd be looking for that to have some more continuations, actually. You see the same signature on the RSI actually giving you bearish divergence, one, two, three stabs, back below the exponential, not even able, not even able to get into the bullish control zone. By the way, this thing has been out of the bullish control zone since w well until last year. It's just been consolidated between the bearish control zone and the neutral zone. Um, so to me, this is this. I mean, th this is where it gets a little bit more hairy. GBTC has been leading spot prices for the last over year, and uh, four hours clear rejection of the twenty one back down below all major moving averages. Actually, yes, we do have a gap down to about four dollars thirty two cents, which would probably put spot charts somewhere around that thirty seven fifty ish area that we spoke about. Um, does does look likely to me. Uh, let's go over and check out, uh, the other top shit coins, or do we want to check out the other top shit coins just yet? No, we don't. We want to look at the longs and shorts, longs and shorts getting ever so close, but still not closing the gap still in favor of the longs. We have 21 or sorry, 22, little over 22,000 open, uh, longs versus 21,000 open shorts. But remember that almost 4,000, these guys are hedged right now. We have under 17,000 shorts, real shorts, actual, actually like naked shorts. Um, so yeah, that does provide a little bit of squeeze potential, not all that much with regards to the longs. But of course, you know, as as I've been saying for the last, uh, I don't know, man, it's it's got to be like a it's got to be like two three weeks now. Um, the shorts just being in this area is of interest and actually the shorts are below twenty one thousand in real time um some have taken profits uh but each and every time that the shorts have gone into this red box territory that has been you know that that has been initiated by major dumps uh this was your february double top at twelve thousand before moving down to six thousand this was your may top at ten thousand before moving down to six thousand this was your august top at eighty four hundred uh before moving down to six thousand this is this was your top at sixty three before moving down to six uh three thousand and then once again we found ourselves in this range and you can see that shorts are once again you know gaining interest coming out of here. So it would lead me to believe that if Bitcoin is going to have a move, you know, a, a big move, it's more, it's, you know, going to be more likely to be the downside. And I would imagine that it probably comes sooner rather than later. Uh, when you do see the short interest accelerate out of this red box territory, that's where the dumps really get, you know, more intense, as you can see from the past. So again, if this is going to happen, I do imagine it would happen uh, at the very least, uh, at the very latest in the next couple of weeks. Jesus Christ, man. There we go. <laughs> Phone's going crazy again, man. Um, anyways, uh, while we're here on the hourly, actually 200 simple is above price action. That's not good. 
But again, just, you know, it's really splitting hairs on lower time frames. I mean, trading this for the last, uh, what is it, like three, three days, this range right here. I mean, it can be done. We've, we've been doing it, but that's not, that's not, that's not the, it's not the best way to be making money, man. It's not the best way to be doing it. Not the best use of time, really. You know, go play a fucking video game or go for a walk outside is what, is what, is what I really should be doing. Um, anyways, uh, let's go check on Mr. Buter. I'm curious how he's doing. He has been the, the weakest of the top three and has been kind of the canary in the coal mine, signaling that uh, everything's uh, on the weaker side. Uh, both opening and closing the last couple daily deals below the yellow 21 exponential. We've actually officially lost this horizontal right here. Uh, we have retested in the early morning hours and so far rejected off of it. Looking like the, looking like the 50 is providing initial support but does not look strong to me we do have daily stokes still moving up which is v of great significance as price action is slightly drooping down you have your stokes moving up that's not a good setup because it suggests that we're essentially resetting the oscillators uh daily rsi uh trending well below the exponential um still still in the neutral zone however uh daily jewel is Man, day, uh, daily jewel. If it does not bounce here, it, this will be a major sell. If, if if we get the next take under that pink, that will be a major sell, uh, and probably be the impetus for sending this guy back down to about 127 and a half, uh, right around the 0.5 Fibonacci retracement. Which, of course, if that area, well, it, you know, if that area is fulfilled, it would it would kind of look like a retest of this ascending trend line right here that's been governing the last couple lows. One, two. Uh, so if we came back and, and fulfilled this area, that would kind of make sense, actually. Um, but overall, we got to go down to the lower time frame to see what they're doing. Uh, four hour, four hour below the 200 simple, not good. Four hour Stokes down, not good. Four hour RSI in the bearish control zone, not good. And resistance right here at 135. So as long as this thing's below 135, I do interpret this as pressure on. Yes, we are resting on the 377X, um, but I don't care all that much about that. I'm curious what the medium time frame also is doing. We got eight hour stokes, uh, actually hinting at a fresh cross down. Uh, obviously we have quite literally eight hours to confirm that now. So a lot can happen in cryptocurrency land. I mean, that's, that's a fucking eternity, right? Uh, 10 hour is down. 12 hour is down. So yeah, I would say, I would say that overall this price action is very droopy, very sloppy. And it just looks like, you know, just slowly, but surely the, bur the bulls are being sheared off the cliff, uh, major resistance right around 143. That would be akin to the same 3930 area that I speak about in Bitcoin. And you can see that in relation to each other, Mr. Buterall is well and far away from that same sort of area, which, you know, Mr. Buterall did lead the market to the upside. Does he lead the market to the downside as well? That's the real question. I would argue that, uh, possible you know possible uh mrs litecoin what's she doing uh 55 dollars or a little bit above 55 bucks but let's see what the daily looks like again daily actually getting rejected right here at the uh, 56 dollar trend line let's actually get this right what is the uh what are also it is doing daily stokes are down daily stokes are actually down um and getting out of the critical zone we do have daily bearish divergence as well one two three four stabs below the exponential kick getting kicked out of the bullish control zone i do believe that this has some more to go you can see that we are currently finding resistance right alongside the red 10 simple moon average we did close above it yesterday which is good but let's go down to the lower time frames to get an idea of what this looks like um yeah, Mrs. Likewin still the one that I'd say still the one. <laughs> uh, still the one that I'd say um, is the, you know, is, is the most neutral to to slightly maybe reaccumulates and and tries another run higher, uh, but below the twenty minutes control on the four hour. I'm curious what the four hour Stokes are doing. They're actually hinting at across the upside on the next tick, um, but four hour RSI doesn't look as uh, as appealing. Um, you know, you, you, you got resistance right here, $56. If you want to make it simple, you got, you got support right here at 54 and a half. If 54 and a half does break, you're going to see, you're going to see move back down likely to uh, 52 and a half, um, 52 and a half of great importance, because if that area is lost, then I would be looking for a move all the way down to about $50. $50 is the biggest level in Mrs. Likewin right now, because if she, as long as Mrs. Likewin is above $50, you can make the argument that you know it's just you know it's, it's just a uh, it's just a pullback and maybe reaccumulates and tries again higher but the second that mrs litecoin breaks 50 dollars right here that's going to resolve this ascending brawny wedge to the downside which at that point in time i would be bearish for a move down to about 44 and that's going to destroy the structure and really start to look like this overall structure is that of an uh, of, of a rising channel, which is typically a bearishly resolved pattern. Anyways, for now, I'll leave it like this. Of course, if Mrs. Litecoin does break back above $57.5, 
that's where I start to change my opinion. But we do have the right volume catchers for a formation like this. And yes, this, for, this formation typically does break out to the downside. Um, let's go check out traditional marks really quick. Traditional marks uh, taking out the the horizontal right here at 281. It's official. Yes, the volume is pretty lackluster on it. Yes, the reaction hasn't been too impressive. But like I said, as soon as you got a golden cross on the daily, and as soon as there was a good reaction right here on, uh, sorry, at the end of last week, no reason to be bearish. This is exactly what I mean. In fact, I was I was bullish on this once I saw that. I, I pay a humongous respect to a fresh uh, golden daily dual golden cross. That's not redundant enough. <laughs> um, but hey, you know, looking at this area, yeah, bouncing off the three eight two, bouncing off the golden cross on the daily, and taking out this resistance right here. That's I mean, that's a strong reaction. That's a really strong reaction because be, this this area has gotten the last one, two, three four, five tops, and now we are above it. That tells me that we have something new going on. You know, the trend is your friend until the end of the trend. Well, the, 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 the trend has ended, as in my opinion, officially. Um, where Where's the next move towards? Probably somewhere around uh, 287, maybe maybe 290. Uh, I don't think that there's too much stopping you from there. Uh, overall, I'd be bullish on this. As as long as this is closing above 281, I'd be I'd be bullish on this. Um, what are also what are saying? Four hour stokes are up. What about daily stokes? What are they doing? Daily stokes are hinting at a fresh cross up, rejecting getting below the neutral zone. That to me is 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 a sign of strength as well. Uh, daily RSI getting back above the exponential and getting back into the bullish control zone. I do like that. So yeah, I would be looking for this to actually have some more continuations um, over time. I'm curious what the hourly does say. Yeah, hourly is looking for a pullback retest in the breakout uh, the breakout point. I mean, volume on this is very lackluster. If I you know there there certainly are questions about this, but as long as it's above 281, I give it the benefit of the doubt. I, again, I repeat, as long as it's above 281, I would not want to be short. And and even as long as it's above about 279, um, I don't see any reason to I don't see any reason to really discount it. Uh, yeah, the volume is the the volume is pretty lackluster. I, I do get that, and it is it is of concern. But price action comes first, and as long as price action is above this area, I uh, I respect it. I respect it. I respect you, price action. Anyway, let's get on over here to. Um, what else do we want to look at? Let's look at uh, Zcash. Or sorry, do we want do we want to look at BNB Cash? Did it reaccumulate or not? Um, yeah, coming back down to our support trend line. Let's go to let's go to this on a higher time frame. Uh, did close above the 21. Yeah, as, as long as we're holding this area, it does look like it's going to try to kind of reaccumulate this area uh, again. Major support right around fourteen dollars and twenty five cents. If if about fourteen dollars and twenty cents is violated, however, then I would be looking for this to come down further. I'm guessing that we probably are printing. Yeah, we are printing bearish divergence here. So so perhaps I actually take this back. You know, I might be taking this back. Uh, yeah, there's major bearish divergence on the 12 hour. And not only that, the 12 hour is signaling a massive potential sell on the jewel. This this is looking like it wants to set up. It's not confirmed just yet, but if you do have the jewel, this could be an example of a perfect sell um, set up. So keep, keep that one in mind. Uh, I do not discount. Whenever the jewel gives me a perfect setup, I do not discount it. Uh, RSI getting getting kicked out of the bullish control zone, trending below the exponential. Don't like that. Uh, yeah, I'd say that this guy actually does want to pull back, and I think that I'd take back what I said. I don't think that this one reaccumulates. I think that it actually moves lower. Um, uh, $13.90, uh, big support. If that area is is violated, then I would be looking for a move down to about $12.85. And, uh, and, uh, you know, if the, if the 12 hour signal actually plays out, I would be looking for a, for, for a full move back down to about uh, $12 even. Um, so yeah, let's look at Mrs. Litecoin. Uh, what's Mrs. Litecoin doing? Nope, we already looked at her. Sorry. Let's look at Zcash. What's Zcash doing? We have a massive wick from hell and uh, descending triangle getting rejected right at the top resistance trend line of descending triangle. And we actually did we close yesterday below the 21 exponential? It's very difficult to see with this wick. Jesus Christ, man. All right, well, uh, let me just see. 5207 close actually did close above the 21. So maybe, maybe it actually does catch wind of this. But of course, as long as it's below uh, $55, don't want too much to do with it. If it does break above $55, it would be looking for a move to about $60 uh, even. Bcash uh, in the context of a descending triangle as well. Tron Cash, what are we doing? Having a bounce off the 200 simple, as we said was likely. But again, you know, as long as this thing is below uh, 2.5 cent, I'd be overall bearish on them. Uh, we've already came back and retested this trend line once. If we came back and retested it again, I'd imagine it probably does get rejected. But, you know, if, if it does break above, then I'd be looking for a move probably actually to almost three cents or 2.9 and a half cent. 
Okay, NeoCash below $9 now, getting rejected once again at this horizontal at $9.30 and down. Do we have continuation on this guy? We do not. We came about three cents shy, but doesn't mean it can't happen. It's still, it's still really fucking close. It'd only take about six cents uh, down move from here. And then I'd be looking for a move down to about 860. Uh, EOS Cash um, losing its losing its formation a little bit. Daily Stokes uh, still up. Daily oh Daily Jewel, Daily Jewel is signaling a sell now. This is not the super strong sell, but it is a good, it is typically a good signal. So if that does play, I'd be looking for a move down to about three dollars thirty three cents. Uh, what about uh, Ripple Cash? What's Ripple Cash doing? Oh my God! So that nice move that we had last night on Mr. Ripple Cash gets this wick above and then immediately closes below. This ascending triangle still holding the same descending triangle that's been harassing Rip Mr. Ripple's nipples for the past four months. Free the nipple! Come on, baby! Free the fucking nipple! We're, we're back even below the 21 exponential right here. Uh, so, so, so the very, you know, if I were to really tighten this up, I'd be saying that we're doing something like this, where, this, where the initial support is coming in around 30 and a half cent and resistance is coming in around 31 and a half cent. If we do break out to the upside, if we actually do confirm above, I would be looking for a move down over to around uh, 33 and a half cent and 34, 34 and a half cent, which is where the actual picture will change. But for now, you know, th this is your major support. If that area does break, I'd be looking for a move down to the low side of the range at around 29 cents. If that area breaks then, well, I'd be looking at a measure move down here, uh, have the descending triangle actually, you know, work its way out to high teens, low 20 cent uh, regions. Uh, Monero Cash, what's Monero Cash doing? Uh, definitely one of the, actually one of the better looking ones, but overall, uh, major resistance still right here at 54 and a half, and uh, the overall support would be 46 and a third. Uh, what about Stellar Cash? 11 cents. There it is, the 11 cent, and taking out this horizontal right here. I do believe that this has some more to go. Like I said yesterday, I do believe that it tries up higher, and it's probably going to get. I mean, it's it, it did take it out. Now it is confirmed, and it would be looking for a move all the way to about 12 and a half cent. Uh, this 12 and a half cent area will also be fulfilling a retest of this trend line that held up Mr. Stellar for the past. It held it up for about a year from 2017 to 2018. We broke it in uh, at the end of 2018. Retested it once. I'd imagine that uh, if if this move does get a little bit more juice that's where we're going um so as long as mr Scheller is below there uh i would be skeptical of it technically it did it did break the falling channel to the upside which is which is more likely as we said that is confirmed now let's see if we can make a measure move on this i don't trust these measure moves all that much but look at this it actually does match up perfectly with that uh 12 and a half or sorry it's not 12 and a half cent it's um it's 13 cent uh, region right here the retest of that trend line going all the way back uh, so, you know, again, a, a nice move. I know a lot of people got into this one. I don't trade Stellar, but hey, you know, if you got into it, congratulations for you. Uh, nice move. Really nice move. And, uh, and it's good to see Stellar actually like not fucking dime. <laughs> uh, it's one of the, it was one of the first cryptos that I actually ever traded when I was like, when I, when, when I first found out about ults, this was the one that I traded. Uh, daily stocks are up and gaining momentum up. Daily RSI looks fine. Uh, yeah, I mean, the jewel actually signaling the bottom right here. Nicely done, jewel. Nicely done. Anyways, I think that covers it up for all of the top shit coins. Let's go to the Bitcoin volatility index. And this is this is very interesting to me because the Bitcoin volatility index is quite literally at multi-year lows. We are, we are, we've only been lower than this current level, I think, once and twice. The first time was in January 2017. The second time was October, November of, of the past year as well, where which, if you remember, that was when Bitcoin, you know, was consolidating before making a major, major move, which the thing about this area is, is that Bitcoin does not like to stay in this area for too long. Um, I think the maximum time that we've really stayed in this area was about uh, from, you know, early October to, yeah, about a month. We've been in this area for, well, not that long, actually. So it could go on for, for a little bit longer. But it does tell me that uh, a big move is, is likely in coming. Um, anyways, back on to spot charts right here. Let's put on the logarithmic scale and put on the let's put on lower time frame. Start to wrap this bitch up. As I do want to be respectful of your time, but overall, you know, the picture of the of the medium time frames has not changed at all until we actually break, you know, thirty eight hundred to the downside or thirty nine thirty to the upside. Nothing really new as far as I'm concerned is happening. Uh, yes, there are some for, there there are some formations uh, signaling some more downside from here. Yes, I would you know my overall opinion is going to be bearish in a bearish market, but Lower time frames right here, a two hour total time frame. Uh, resistance right around 3870. Support right around, well, I mean, basically, where we just got to actually, right around 3830, 30, 30, uh, 20 ish area. Um, if we do break out 38.20 to the downside and do confirm below there, then there, that actually could have some follow through with, with finally and fully conf uh, confirming a breakdown to. 
that next level below the 21 exponential on the daily that we just spoke about. If we break up to the upside uh, on the very small time frames above 38 to uh, 70, I'll be looking for a move back into the into the blue box territory right here. But until it actually formally breaks out above, wouldn't get too too damn bullish either. So that's going to do it for today. Um, I hope this one finds you well. I'll be back on later with some more live stream action. Hopefully, we can get some uh, price action before then. That'd be great because <laughs> I know it's I know it's uh, I know it's pretty fucking boring for a lot of people out there. Um, but hey, do you want to be wishing you well on this uh, lovely thirsty Thursday or just regular Thursday if that's uh, if that's the Thursday that you like? I'll be back. Like I said, I'll be back on later. So I want to be. So I want to. Um, yeah. Just want to wish, Jesus Christ, man, like at a loss for words. I don't think I got enough sleep last night. But hey, as always, signing off, wishing you well. Take care.